transitions from the classical to romantic period, time travel for music. I am a performer. I am a musician. And I'm a time traveler. No, really, time machines do exist. And music is it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Perhaps a chunk of wood and a stick with horse hair isn't exactly the DeLorean from Back to the Future. But I'd argue that these real-life examples are better. Looking at history through music gives you a unique perspective. It isn't a tedious list of dates or unpronounceable names. It's a blend of the human experience that we so often forget came with them. Music doesn't let us see history. It lets us feel it. So as society has morphed over time, music has mirrored the change. As one would expect, one of the most pivotal turning points in Western music occurred during a time of tremendous social upheaval, the 1700s and 1800s. This transition from the classical to romantic periods of music was a major turning point in the way society viewed the individual and the way that they expressed that in their music. Now, from roughly 1750 to 1825, the classical period was in full motion. This was the time of absolute monarchs, the Enlightenment, the American and French revolutions, and, of course, Mozart, the child prodigy who stunned the Western world. While the seven-year-old Mozart was shocking Europe with his musical ability, Enlightenment ideals were spreading like wildfire through the continent. Enlightenment thinkers believed that all men were inherently good, independent, and equal. Prominent Enlightenment philosopher John Locke once wrote, all men, being equal and independent, ought not harm another in their life, health, liberty, or possessions. With this idea of human equality, Enlightenment philosophers saw absolute monarchies as unjust, thinking that the government should serve the people rather than the other way around. Classical composers like Mozart wrote music that emphasized Enlightenment ideals, such as symmetry and balance. This is easily exemplified by one of his most famous pieces, and Kleine Nachtmusik, uh, Little Night Music. Listen to the balance as the first phrase goes up, and the second phrase goes back down. Listen to the balance of the short notes and the long notes throughout the rest of the excerpt. Of the aristocracy. 
But as the middle class grew, they wanted to enjoy music too, but they weren't prosperous enough to have their own private musicians. They could, however, afford a ticket to a concert, so public concerts skyrocketed. In this way, composers had a new patron, the public, whose favor of the passionate romantic style helped to spur the movement. Now, instead of being considered servants of the rich, composers were honored by their audiences. This was the birth of the notion of the musician as an artist. Beethoven himself was one of the first to break out of the patronage system, making a living on his own by writing on commission, performing in concerts, and even selling his work to not one, but several publishing houses, something that was rarely done at the time. Theas, the sensational romantic composers, were the forefathers of our modern celebrities. But all of these social changes were reflected in the romantic music. It was passionate, it was raw, it was emotional. Romantics took melodrama to a whole new level. They threw out the old formula, exaggerated dynamics, and lengthened melodies to build up to an emotional climax. This is easily seen in one of the most famous pieces of all time by the master himself, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. You can hear how a simple four-note refrain, dun 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 dun, is sort of elevated to a level of importance that the entire piece is centered around, which is a metaphor for the elevation of the role of the individual in society. Melodrama 